Hey, what up everyone? So as you can see from the title and the miniature, I have a pretty exciting topic for you today because, well, we are going to see how we can access, well, the value of a property, even when that property has been marked as private. Now, before we begin, as you can imagine, this is a topic that can be, well, very controversial. And so I want to start with a disclaimer. And I want to state that, well, of course, I do not recommend that in your production code, well, you try to inspect the content of an instance in order, well, to see what is inside a private property. Private properties are private for a reason. It's because they are not part of the public API exposed by either, well, a framework or an SDK, and your production code shouldn't rely on the value of these private properties. Moreover, if you try to access a private property from one of Apple's framework, well, it's ground for your app being rejected from the App Store. So why am I talking about this if I don't recommend using this technique in production code? Well, there are two reasons for it. The first one is that the technique we're going to use in order to see what is the content of a private property, well, I think it's a pretty cool technique. It's very, well, we could say interesting because it shows us many things on how Swift works. So I figured it is interesting to share this technique with you. And honestly, I find that this technique is pretty cool. And then the other reason is that while you shouldn't use this technique in production code, there are actually situations where it could be useful, for instance, when debugging or when writing a test, as we are going to see later in this video. So that's all for the disclaimer. Now let's get started. So to begin, I'm going to set the context as always by pasting in some code. So as you can see, I have pasted the code for two classes. So the first class is a class called service. As you can see, there is a method inside it. And then I have a second class called a view model. So as you can see, this view model in its initializer, well, it takes an instance of service and it stores, well, this instance in a private property. So this is, of course, a very simplified example, but it's still an example of a real world situation where you have a complex object that is going to encapsulate, we could say, simpler dependencies. You inject the dependency through the initializer and then, well, your complex object is going to use this dependency. And now let's say that I want to write a test, a test to make sure that the service being used by my view model is indeed the one I have provided in my initializer. So let's try to write this test and let's see if it is possible or not. So I'm going to switch to my testing code. So as you can see, there is already some code written. So I have a test case here. And in this test case, I have one function called test dependency injection. And as you can imagine, well, in this function, in this test, I want to test that the service I have injected inside my view model is indeed the one being used by the view model. Okay, so let's try and implement this test. So first, as you can imagine, well, I'm going to instantiate a service. And then I'm going to instantiate a view model. And well, I'm going to pass my service as an argument to the initializer of view model. So, so far, so good. And now, well, if I want to test the fact that the service used by the view model right here is indeed the one I have injected through the initializer, well, I need a way to access the service used by the view model. And of course, as you can imagine, if I try to do it like this, so view model dot service, I'm going to have an error. So yeah, the error is here. So it says service is inaccessible due to private protection level. And of course, this makes sense because service here is a private property of the type view model. And so I am not allowed to use it outside the file where view model has been defined. So how could I do to actually get the value of this property, even though it is marked as private? Well, the key and the technique to solve this issue is to use something called introspection. So we've actually already talked about introspection and reflexive code on this channel because in Swift, well, reflection uses the mirror API. And I've already done, I think, two videos on this API. So if you want a recap on how a mirror works in Swift, well, you have the link to the video that is appearing somewhere in a corner of the screen and you can go check it out. And so coming back to the matter at hand, let's see how we are going to use this mirror API in order well, to access a private property. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to write an extension on the type mirror. And then inside this extension, I'm going to actually implement a function that is going to allow me well to access a private member of an instance. So first, I'm going to begin by writing the signature of the function. So like this, let me write the missing curly braces. 
Okay, everything is good. And so before we go further, I want to talk about the signature of this function. So first, as you can see, the function is called first child. So child in this context is child in the meaning that a mirror uses the term child. So child means a property of the instance that is being introspected. So I've called the function first child because, well, this is the term that makes the most sense in the context of a mirror, but I could very much have called this first property it would be the same, it would mean the same thing. Then we can see that the type is generic and it makes sense because, well, the property we are going to access could be of, well, any possible type. Then you can say that I am passing an argument to this method. So the argument is the name of the property or the label of the property. So here in our case, it would be the string service. And then you can see that the function is returning an optional T and it makes sense because, well, I could very well pass in a name for which there is no property with this name. And in that case, of course, I want my function to return nil. Okay, so now this is the big moment of the video because it's time for me to implement this function first child name. So I'm going to paste in the code for this function and then I'm going to go over it line by line to explain to you. So as you can see, even though the function is pretty powerful, it's also pretty short because there is just, well, one, two, three, four lines. So let me go over them one by one. Let's start with the first line. As you can see, I am using a property called children. And children, in the context of a mirror, it means all of the properties of the instance that we are currently, well, introspecting. And of course, as you can imagine, when I say all the properties, it also includes the one marked private. Okay, then you can see I am calling compact map on this collection. So compact map, if you're not familiar with it, it's basically the same thing than map except that nil values are being removed from the final result. Okay, let's see what I do in the closure I pass to compact map. So in the first line of the closure, as you can see, I am well doing a type cast. So I am attempting to cast the value for the current child, so the current property, as an instance of type T. And if this cast well does not succeed, I return nil. And it makes sense because I am looking for a value of type T. So if the cast fails, it means that this is not the right value and I want to discard it and move on to well, the next potential value. Okay, now let's see what happens when the type cast does succeed. As you can see, there is then a second test. And well, quite logically, I am testing that the label of the child, so the name of the property, is equal to the name passed as an argument. And if that's the case, well, I return the value. Otherwise, I return nil, meaning that I discard the current property. And finally, because compact map returns a collection, I take the first element of this collection. And so with this function right here being now implemented, well, in my testing code, I'm now going to be able to access the value of a property that has been marked as private. So let's go back to the testing code and let's try to actually implement, well, the test that I want to implement, meaning testing that the service used by the view model is indeed the one I have provided through the initializer. So the first step here is going to be, well, to create a mirror that is going to reflect my view model. This way, I have a mirror, meaning that I have an object that is going to introspect to check at runtime what is the content of my view model and what are the properties of my view model. And now, as you can imagine, I'm going to use this mirror to actually implement my test. So I want to test that the service used by the view model and the service I've provided to the initializer are indeed the same instance. And the way to do this in a test is to use, well, the assert XCT assert identical. So it's similar to XCT assert equal, except that it's not going to test equality in the sense of equitable, and instead is going to test that the two instances have indeed the same reference. And as you can see, this only works with any objects, so with reference type, because, well, they are the only ones that have a reference in memory. And so I want to test that the service I have provided as the argument of the init of my view model is the same one than the service being used by the view model. And to get this value, the service being used by the view model that is private, I'm going to use my mirror. And I'm going to say that with this mirror, I want to access the first child name service. And so, well, using this method that we have implemented earlier, I should now be able to retrieve what is the value of the property service, even though that property is marked as private. So let's try it. I'm going to run my test and we're going to see, well, what happens. 
And so, as you can see by the green check mark right here, everything went according to plan. So my test has indeed passed successfully, which means that my function first child named has indeed been able to retrieve the value associated with the property service, even though that property was marked private. So it means that the technique that I've showed you, well, actually does work as intended. So we are getting near the end of this video, but before we end, once again, I want to go over the fact that this technique relies on introspection to access private variable, which is not something that you should do and your production code should definitely not rely on calling this method right here. However, as you've seen, well, this method can be quite useful in your test if you need to access a private property for some reason, or also well, in debugging, if you are integrating a third party framework and you are seeing a weird behavior and you would like well to have more information when you debug, using such a method to access the value of a private property could be quite useful. But once again, let me reiterate, you should not be using this technique in your production code because it is more than likely to get you into some big trouble at some point. Okay, so this time it is the end of the video. So actually, and well, as always, I'm super curious if you have already used this technique. Give me your feedback in the comments. You know, has it been useful? Did we run into any trouble? I would be super curious to know about it. And as always, well, if you have enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like or share the video with your colleagues. Thank you for watching this video and see you next time.